All right, guys, I want to do a quick little video this morning on this brisk Saturday. I found out a big portion this particular moment to my tuning woes. This little vacuum line has a tendency to crack right here on this bend, crack on that. If you can see that, there's a huge crack where that thing goes over the nipple. If this thing can't uh, adjust the fuel pressure to the changing manifold vacuum that's a huge problem guys I scrounged through all my crap in the garage and found another one that wasn't damaged so I threw that on there something that small you would think would be insignificant uh, go to eBay and look that little piece up around $35 with shipping for that little bitty vacuum line that goes from the intake manifold to your regulator. I wanted to show you guys what I got in the mail today because I've been having all this problems, you know, tuning this thing. So what I wanted to show you was I ordered a Speedmaster non-liquid filled uh, fuel pressure gauge. We found out years ago back in the 90s that you don't want to run a liquid filled gauge inside your engine compartment because the liquid actually changes viscosity dependent on under hood temperatures and you'll get inconsistent fuel pressure readings if you use a liquid filled gauge that's permanently mounted in the engine compartment uh, subject to the under hood temperature. So I just got online, found a, a de you know, cheap deal on a fuel pressure gauge that'll handle the range I needed. But I thought it was funny how they literally sent that little bitty gauge, a box in a box. I don't know if that saved them money or cost them money to send it like this, but it was literally this little box in the big box covered with, you know, like paper. I wanted to show you this little jobber. Seems like a pretty heavy duty casing. I'm going to show you. I'm going to get it installed here in a minute. We're going to see if it actually works. But it's just a 0 to 100 uh, fuel pressure gauge. 1 8 MPT. Uh, you know, run of the mill. Non-liquid filled fuel pressure gauge. So we got that in the mail finally on Friday. The adapter. It came several days before that. But I've been waiting on all the pieces to show up. This basically adapts to your fuel rail where your Schrader valve is and then has the adapter where you can either go 90 degrees with your gauge or you can just screw it straight into the adapter and have it sticking straight out in the front, which I think looks kind of weird, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. So let's take our new little items of acquisition and see if we can get them installed on the vehicle and maybe find out if the fuel pressure is where it's supposed to be. But if you just look at your uh, truck fuel rail, or car for that matter, look for the Schrader valve. That's where you'll hook up your mechanical fuel pressure gauge. Now keep in mind, when you hook up your adapter and then your gauge, don't forget to remove the Schrader valve or you'll get zero pressure on your gauge and probably have a heart attack. So hold on, hold that thought. Okay, real quick with my hand shielding the microphone. If you'll look, what I've done is tighten, installed and tighten the adapter to the Schrader valve or opening on the fuel rail. Then I've made a reference mark to it to how I need the gauge to point or the 90 degree adapter to point for my fuel pressure gauge to be at the angle I want it. That way it doesn't interfere with the intake manifold or anything like that. I just wanted to let you guys know my thought process and how you got to piece this thing together so that everything goes together and it doesn't have to swing around and hit the intake during installation or removal. All right, so the first part wasn't too painful. Basically all I had to do, if you can see, it's almost worn off now, but I put a little witness mark with a marker on there because when I install this adapter on the fuel rail, it gets snug and tight. With this, I needed the opening for my gauge to point in the same direction. Perfectly lined up with what I wanted. So I did a little test fit on the car and everything looked good. Here's the deal though. You can't install the gauge and get it to spin on and clear 
while installing to the fuel rail. So you got to do this first, then install your gauge. I will put a little bit of thread sealer on this specific, or spe <laughs> Woo, I can talk if I try, um, especially because it's got that weird chrome plating on there. That's going to promote leakage, even in an MPT fitting. So I highly suggest putting a little bit of thread sealer on there. And then you should be in good shape. And I want you guys, guys to see the whole process. You know, your, your fuel rail may or may not have its original factory cap. But you find your fuel rail, your Schrader valve. You're going to need a Schrader valve tool. You can find them at the parts store. Um, all kinds of different places, but basically just goes in here and grabs two flats. Just like a tire valve, you'll see that it didn't have any fuel pressure on it. So you'd always want to check that. I should have mentioned that before I started jacking with it. Just kind of step your face away and push on that Schrader valve to make sure there's no pressure on there. Then you just use your Schrader valve tool to reach in there and grab it unscrew it no big deal now this is just like an an style fitting right here your adapter will have no o-ring in it so you'll just screw this on take your nine or five eighths wrench Remember, that's an AN fitting, so you're not trying to, you know, break it or anything. Usually what I'll do on these AN style fittings is I will put my wrench on there, grab it right at the end, and then just snug it. I don't want to go too far and damage the ceiling surfaces inside of there. Now all we have to do is take our fuel pressure gauge with a little bit of thread sealant. Now keep in mind, I did previously clean all of these components to make sure they didn't have any uh, shavings, dirt, debris of any kind down inside of them. Okay, now here's the part where I don't like to turn a lot holding this outer part of the gauge just in case you could break it or something. Just grab it with a wrench start snugging it down once it gets fairly snug because it is that MPT style uh, fitting what you'd want to do is don't just keep going until you can't go any farther once it gets snug angle the gauge to where you want it and then just leave it if that makes any sense like I would like to have that thing pretty eh, probably about right there I just want it to look kind of level from the side yeah that don't look too bad could probably tighten it just a hair more I was just trying to get it level with the fuel rail on the words I know that sounds weird but I'm just really picky about the way this stuff looks about right there should be good. All right, guys. I turned the uh, key on so I could cycle those injectors since I relieved all the pressure and opened up the system by removing that Schrader valve. Everything's dry. So let's see. Right now, with no vacuum, I was I want to be able to see 45 or four. I think it's 45 to 48 pounds of fuel pressure this thing is showing about 47 almost 48 pounds of fuel pressure that's with no vacuum on the regulator and the pump not even you know uh, going up to its maximum pressure which happens when there's no manifold vacuum that's running let's fire it up and see what it does Theory. 
58. I mean, it's bouncing like a banshee, but with no manifold vacuum, it is increasing the pressure to 58. And when you put the manifold vacuum to it, it goes back down to the range it needs to be in to idle. So, I mean, that shows that the regulate the line, the regulator, and everything is working now with the new vacuum source to the manifold. Once we found that that vacuum line that goes between the manifold and the pressure regulator on the fuel rail, we, we determined that is the main culprit with a lot, if not all, of my tuning woes and issues on this engine. Here's the, here's the controversy you run into online. People give you misinformation and you don't get the full truth, you only get a half truth. Yes, the LS fuel injectors, especially on the trucks, were rated at 58 pounds of fuel pressure. So all these people that are running out and buying brand new fuel pumps and replacing parts, stop doing that. There's nothing wrong with your fuel pump. When you put manifold vacuum to that regulator on your stock rail, it's only supposed to show 45 to 48 pounds of pressure. Now, when you accelerate, when you open your throttle, your manifold vacuum drops. So what happens is, is when you take away the vacuum source to your fuel pressure regulator on the rail, it raises your fuel pressure between 58 and 62 pounds. Okay, so you guys just keep that in mind. Yes, they are rated at 58 pounds of fuel pressure, but that's with the engine running and low to zero manifold vacuum, allowing that pressure to be that high. Instead of having 58 to 62 pounds of fuel pressure, I was only getting that base, what, 45 to 48 pounds throughout the whole RPM range. I fixed that vacuum leak, so my fuel pressure is responding appropriately to you know, throttle input, manifold vacuum, etc., etc. What I found out is the 24.8s I have in there, too small. The extra set of 2002 injectors I have that are 25.2 pounds, they're too small. So basically, the uh, owner at House of Boost says, if I'm going to be in the neighborhood of close to 400 horsepower, I'm, he's recommending that I get a set of either 27 or 30 pound injectors so that the injector is not maxed out trying to feed the engine at that 400 you know, horsepower range. That's where I'm at today, guys. I just wanted to do this real quick because I got a lot of work to do and uh, shouldn't really be messing with this, but it's one of them things that if you find something new that's wrong with your vehicle and you want to fix it so bad you just can't stand it, so you just go ahead and do it anyway and then try to make up the time somewhere else. So anyway, appreciate you guys watching. Hopefully you have a good weekend. Please like, subscribe, share, hit the little bell, whatever we need to do to get some views. Thank you.